What do we mean by economic consequences? We mean the dollar value of damage to property and the dollar value of lost productivity. Everyone wants to see the dollar signs. We want to understand the economic consequences of each project to help us better understand the risk of each project and prioritize across our portfolio. When we understand the economic risk, we can also determine if there are ways we could improve existing infrastructure to reduce the economic consequences, and we can also determine if we are operating our projects in a way that limits economic consequences. Economic damage calculations are important because they complete dam and levy safety assessments and helps prioritization, determine modification needs of existing infrastructure, and inform operation of existing infrastructure. The learning objectives for this course are to define important elements of economic consequence analysis, describe how economic consequences are used to inform risk management activities, and also to discuss other economic considerations. What is our goal? Our goals are dam safety assessment and prioritization, modification of existing infrastructure and operation of existing infrastructure. Economic consequence analysis involves direct economic losses, which include structure, content, vehicular, and agricultural, and also indirect economic losses, which include losses based on reductions in productivity. Lost benefits include navigation, recreation, water supply, flood risk management, and hydropower. There are also repair and replacement costs. There are four accounts associated with economic consequence analysis. There are four main types of damage computations within LifeSim. First, LifeSim computes damages for structures that do and do not collapse. For a structure that does not collapse, the main focus within the computation will be on the max depth that reached that structure. For structures that do collapse, the main focus in on the hydraulic force or depth times velocity at that structure. These are the most typical damage categories. Second, LifeSim computes damages to crops using the duration of flooding and time of arrival. This is an optional damage category. And lastly, LifeSim calculates indirect damages by focusing on capital, labor, life loss estimates, and direct damage estimates. This is also an optional damage category. Total capital is a summation of the structure and content values for all commercial, public, and industrial structure types. Total labor is a summation of the daytime populations for all commercial, public, and industrial structure types, workforce. So first, let's talk through what is needed for the direct damages computations. This is a list of the inputs that are needed for the model to estimate direct damages at and within structures and to vehicles. We use the NSI to help us put together structure inventory data within USACE. Based on each structure's assigned stability criteria, a stability threshold is sampled for each structure. This threshold defines the highest hydraulic force that a structure can withstand. Prior to any direct damage computations, LifeSim will check whether or not the depth times velocity structural stability threshold for total damage is exceeded. If the stability threshold is exceeded, the structure is assumed to collapse and the structure, contents, and vehicles will all automatically be assigned a 100% loss. If a structure doesn't collapse, the model will then look at the max depth and the depth damage function associated with the structure's occupancy type. For example, one-story single-family is two-story single-family. There are three main components needed to calculate direct economics damages. The max depth grid at the structure location, the FDE, and the depth damage function. Think about how first FFE and depth impacts economic damages. FFE is usually considered the front door sill, area where livable space starts. The home in the middle is more likely to have higher damage than homes on either side of it. A depth damage function defines the relationship between the percent of damage caused at incremental depths for each occupancy type. The course has three main methods for developing depth damage curves. Expert elicitation uses post-event survey and an educated guess. Synthetic flood damage functions are constructed from estimates of what damages would be for several hypothetical levels of flooding. Empirical based on actual data after an event. 
There are several resources available for somewhat universal depth damage functions if you don't have ones created specific to your study area. Research is underway to revise existing EGM curves. To determine the direct economic damages of a structure, its contents, and its associated vehicles, we look at the max depth grids to determine the maximum depth at a given structure, maximum mu SE at that structure, minus the first floor elevation of that structure, equals maximum depth at structure. Each structure is assigned an occupancy type that is associated with at least three depth damage functions. The depth damage function is a way to determine the estimated percent damage of the property value given a specified depth for a given occupancy type. Given the max depth at a given structure, we look at the depth damage function to determine an estimated percent of damage. That percentage is multiplied by the structure total value to determine the total direct damage that occurs at and within a structure. Repeat steps for contents, cars, and other, and sum up. This total is total direct damages, unless your model also has an agricultural component. A user can create custom curves or occupancy types for their study area. 1. Hydraulic Data 2. National Agricultural Statistics Service Data. Cropland data layer is a product that represents the type of crop and the geographic location of crops throughout the entire United States. 3. Crop Budgets Crop planting cost input data is required for the economic loss computations, available from local cooperative extension system offices, found on the U.S. Department of Agriculture's website. Final components of crop planting data are the dates of the first possible and last possible plantings. Data is used to create a function that represents total value of the inputs in the field at any point in the year, converted to a percentage of the max total value of the inputs in the field to calculate the percentage damageable at any point in the year. The max total value input into the field is not necessarily equivalent to the value achieved at market for the crops pulled from the field for two reasons. The harvest cost and shipping costs need to be added to all inputs to get the full cost to produce the crops. The value of the crop may be less than the cost to produce. LifeSim uses a proration of the total value input less the harvest costs as a proxy for an exposed value. 4. Crop Values Crop characteristics are necessary for LifeSim to compute the appropriate reduction in crop value due to the costs associated with harvesting. The required input characteristics are harvest date, harvest cost, yield, unit price, and percentage of total crop value lost due to late planting. 5. Duration Damage Relationships This is what it looks like when imported from NASS and is editable. You can select Substitute Crops. It is a lot more rare to use this piece in models. Think areas along the Mississippi River, for example. Damage to crops is dependent upon the value added by the farmer to the field at the time of flooding and how much of that value is susceptible to flooding. The damage driving parameter is duration. For simplicity, the damage calculation is split into two pieces, the seasonally based value and the seasonally based damage. The first piece of ag damages is how the seasonally based value changes with time. That is, we know that the time of planting impacts the value of the harvest. Think about farmer's almanacs. So, first LifeSim has to determine this seasonally based value. We also know that damages fluctuate based on seasonality because some crops can better withstand short duration floods depending on how far along the plant is developed. And then some crops are just more resilient in general, as well as more mature plants tend to be more robust. So this is the second piece LifeSim is looking at. So first, how much it's worth based on seasonality, and second, how much damage to expect based on seasonality. This is a general example of what seasonal duration damage relationships look like. This is an agriculture damage results example. So for example, if we flood a bunch of wheat farms, we know we have directly impacted the wheat industry, but how are bread, meat, and farm equipment industries impacted also? Indirect effect from REC on S user manual. The indirect effects include the backward-linked industry suppliers for goods and services that support the directly affected industries, supporting indirect jobs, 
labor income, value added, and economic output. For example, if construction activity is the direct effect, indirect business supporting construction would include architectural and engineering, lumber suppliers, trucking, steel manufacturers, among others. These are considered backward-linked industries supporting the construction activity. Basically, ECAM is looking at market interactions and how a change in labor and capital could affect all of those markets. For example, for complementary goods, if supply curve of wheat goes down, the quantity supply of bread goes down and price of bread goes up. For substitute tight goods, if supply curve for wheat goes down, quantity demanded of meats and price of meats may as a result go up. For primary and secondary goods, if supply curve for wheat goes down, quantity supplied of farm equipment may go down and price may go up. CGE models are a class of economic models that use actual economic data to estimate how an economy might react to changes in policy, technology, or other external factors. In economics, elasticity is the measurement of the percentage change of one economic variable in response to a change in another. An elastic variable with an absolute elasticity value greater than 1 is one which responds more than proportionally to changes in other variables. In contrast, an inelastic variable with an absolute elasticity value less than 1 is one which changes less than proportionally in response to changes in other variables. Inelastic goods are often described as necessities. A shift in price does not drastically impact consumer demand or the overall supply of the good because it is not something people are able or willing to go without. Examples of inelastic goods would be water, gasoline, housing, and food. Elastic goods are usually viewed as luxury items. An increase in price for an elastic good has a noticeable impact on consumption. The good is viewed as something that individuals are willing to sacrifice in order to save money. An example of an elastic good is movie tickets, which are viewed as entertainment and not a necessity. USACE uses ECAM in LifeSim for flooding impacts and RECONS for construction impacts. We hear about indirect economics. Here are indirect economics with ECAM. Here are more indirect economics with ECAM. Take time to rehear about ECAM key inputs. Based on IMPLN, impact analysis for planning, input output model data where 440 economic sectors have been aggregated for LifeSim into 30 sectors. Data includes statistics for production, employment, income, and other economic indicators. So if you have a shock in the market, say you slash your labor in half, then how does that impact the firms and therefore the production of their products and services? The event that shocks the system reduces the labor and capital inputs, thus reducing the ability to produce the product. ECAM outputs indirect economic damage report, and indirect employment loss report. And finally, we end up with outputs, where we can see how employment and production changed for each economic sector within a county for each of our alternatives. So in short, direct damages and life loss estimates are used to evaluate the losses of capital and labor as a ratio of overall available capital and labor by sector. The resulting labor and capital loss ratios are then submitted to ECAM as inputs used to determine the indirect damages. Nashville, Tennessee 2010 This impacted jobs of people at these businesses, service industry, alcohol industry, public transit too, and from downtown, tourism, sporting events sales, utilities, construction industry, music industry, and so on. ECAM means Economic Consequences Assessment Model. RECONS means Regional Economic System. IMPLAN means Economic Impact Analysis for Planning. Additional economic damages to consider are the lost benefits, ACAT the benefits you can't obtain if the project is not operating as intended. MMC has developed a toolbox to calculate these damages. Flood Risk Management Benefits 
An average annual value is used to measure the lost benefits based on historic flood damages prevented that are calculated for the annual flood damage report. Each district uses either discharge damage or stage damage relationships for areas downstream of the dam to estimate flood damage with and without the project. These are reported to Congress on an annual basis. To determine an average annual value, the historical records of damages in each year are indexed to current value and divided by the number of record years to estimate an annual average. If only a cumulative value is available, no annual records, the value is indexed from the midpoint year and divided by the years of project operation to develop the annual average. Flood Risk Management Benefits An average annual value is used to measure the lost benefits based on historic flood damages prevented that are calculated for the annual flood damage report. Each district uses either discharge damage or stage damage relationships for areas downstream of the dam to estimate flood damage with and without the project. These are reported to Congress on an annual basis. To determine an average annual value, the historical records of damages in each year are indexed to current value and divided by the number of record years to estimate an annual average. If only a cumulative value is available, no annual records, the value is indexed from the midpoint year and divided by the years of project operation to develop the annual average. Navigation Benefits Lost navigation benefits are sourced from the shipper carrier costs data prepared by the Planning Center of Expertise for Inland Navigation in conjunction with assistance from a navigation advisory team. The SCC provides a basis for estimating the impact of unscheduled lock closure or disruption to navigation as a result of loss of navigable pool or lock closure. The SCC data provides navigation impacts based on transportation savings rates for outage durations ranging from a single day to an entire year. Municipal and Industrial Water Supply Benefits Annual water supply benefits are based on the project's total contracted yield in million gallons per day MGT, and the average contract cost of water storage reallocation per acre foot. The average reallocation costs are based on post-1986 reallocation contracts, which have been judged as the best way to estimate willingness to pay for water using the data available on a national scale. To estimate the annual value, the total contracted yield in MGD is converted to acre fee per year, and the national average post-1986 reallocation cost per acre foot is applied to estimate the annual value. Population served by water supply is estimated by assuming 1,200 GPD per person unless better data is available. Water supply intakes within navigation pools typically are not contracted with USACE, meaning there is often no data on the amount of withdrawals and how intakes would be impacted by pool loss. Therefore, the value of water supply within navigation pools will not be estimated unless data is available. However, known water users may be listed under critical infrastructure impacted by project failure. Irrigation Water Supply Benefits The annual value of irrigation water of evaluated projects will be based on the federal cost for irrigation by project from the IWR Water Supply Database Report. The price levels of the federal cost for irrigation in this table are those at the time the project was built. Unless otherwise indicated, it will be assumed the price level is that of the year the project was completed for purposes of this estimate. The Corps' Water Supply Handbook indicates that a 30-year period of analysis is used to calculate annual costs of irrigation water supply. The federal discount rate for water supply is obtained from the Annual Economic Guidance Memorandum for discount rates. The annual value of irrigation will be the federal cost to irrigation indexed to current price level and amortized over a 30-year period, using the appropriate federal discount rate. Water supply intakes within navigation pools typically are not contracted with USACE, meaning there is often no data on the amount of withdrawals and how intakes would be impacted by pool loss. Therefore, the value of water supply within navigation pools will not be estimated unless data is available. However, known water users may be listed under critical infrastructure impacted by project failure. 
Recreation Benefits Annual recreation benefits lost due to breach are based on Project Average Annual Visitation and Unit Day Value UDV, per visit. Estimates are developed for the project pre-breach, existing condition, and post-breach. The lost benefit is the increment between those two conditions. Average annual visitation is obtained from the most recent five years of OMBIL visitation records. Visitation is then broken out into general recreation and general hunting and fishing using percentages developed from the recreation activities on the Value to the Nation website. UDV scores for each recreation subarea are pulled from RecBest, and a visit weighted average UDV is developed to represent the entire project pre breach condition. The total visitations for the post breach condition are estimated by assuming a percentage loss based on activity. Water based visits are reduced by 100%, while non water based visits are reduced by 50%. UDV scores are also reduced by 80% in the post-breach condition, except for the availability of opportunity, which remains unchanged. The UDV values are based on the latest version of the Annual Economic Guidance Memorandum, EGM, for Recreation Unit Day values. Other benefits such as water quality and emergency response costs are typically not included in MNC consequence estimates. Repair costs are estimated based on the original construction cost of the project. That cost is indexed to current value, and then a percentage of that updated cost is used as the repair cost. Typically, 33% is used. However, if the breach width divided by the dam length is greater than 33%, meaning that the breach takes out more than 33% of the dam, then that higher percentage may be used to reflect a higher repair and replacement cost. More detailed estimates from a risk cadre or other analysis may also be used. It doesn't mean they should be omitted if they are significant for your study and you have the data available. Do it. How much to remove dam clogged in the spillway? Or to mitigate the environmental havoc wreaked? How much was spent on evacuation efforts? So we do all this analysis and come up with some sort of economic cost associated with our dam or levy failure. It helps us prioritize allocation of resources across the portfolio. Life safety is paramount, but when we have many projects with similar life loss estimates and risk ratings, the next step is to consider which projects require the most attention from an economic standpoint. Economic analysis provides us a framework to compare costs and benefits across our projects. Check on learning, answer the question. Check on learning, answer the question. Check on learning, answer the question. Check on learning, answer the question.